Hey guys, welcome back. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to build an option chain database. We're gonna be using the Trader API to get option chain data. Ideally, you wanna run the script at the end of the day, once the prices have settled for the end of the session. Now I set up the script to be ran via the cron. So I have this running Monday through Friday, and after it loads these packages and sources my Trader API functions, the first thing it'll do is test whether or not the current day is a trading day and that's done on line five. So if it is, it's gonna step into this block. Otherwise, it's just gonna print out it's not a business day. And the very first thing we need to do is get a list of tickers. Here I'm just using a couple of RDS files that contain ticker symbols that I wanna run this for. Wherever you're getting your list from, just make sure you assign these into tickers and make sure you replace the hyphens with slashes for this API. So my list of tickers is pretty lengthy. So I just reassigned tickers for only these three stocks. So from lines 21 through 33 is where we actually loop to get all the option chains for all of our stocks. Since this gets returned as a list, as OC1, we want to eliminate those lists without any data, and that's done via line 35. After you run that line, you should be able to see OC1 in your environment. And since we only called three stocks, we were able to pull data for all three. This is where all of our option chains are stored. So we have to rbind this list, which is done in the next line, and we're gonna store them into OPC. And in OPC, we see that we have 78 columns and 4,700 different entries. So this will get all the option chains available for each of the stocks or ETFs. Before adding this table to your database, it's a good idea to save these locally. So in the very next line, we're gonna write OPC to an external drive, and these are saved by trading day in case you need to reference the data. Once that's done, you're gonna get a printout of the unique number of symbols we were able to get and also the ones that we were not able to get. We will then format all of our timestamps and return these as numeric, which makes it easier to store in our database. You're gonna to wanna to list all the columns you wanna keep and store in your database. And for each of these columns, you need to set the column types. After that set, we're gonna call our SQLite driver and set the path on where we wanna store this database. We're then gonna write the table into our database by passing in OPC. We're gonna set append to true and overwrite to false and pass in all of our column types. And since these tables get pretty lengthy, I've created some commands here that you can run, which will create an index for the underlying symbol, the date and the expiration date so that the query doesn't take too long when requesting data. And at the very end of the run, you're gonna to wanna to disconnect from your database and you'll get a printout that you have reached the end of the script. And that's pretty much all you have to do to request the data and store it into your database. As I mentioned, the script is ready for scheduling. So whether you're using Mac or Windows, you can just set that up to run at the end of each session. Well, with that guys, this concludes the video. I hope this was useful information. I'll leave a link down in the description area to my Patreon where you can find the script. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.